Our show continues. IRG Physical and Hand Therapies Health Talk with Dr. Heshmati, Senior Regional Medical Director at the Everett Clinic. And uh, Shannon, COVID is still here. It's been a couple years. And Dr. Heshmati is going to talk about the safety of the vaccine with pregnancy. Yeah, you know, it's a little bit of a controversy you see in the social media and a lot of around around a lot of uh, social circles about the concern about being vaccinated if you're pregnant. And Dr. Hashmati is going to dispel any myths there. Here's more right now. Dr. Hashmati, thank you again for joining us. Health Talk. You've been on the show uh, in the past um, and our listeners are excited to hear from you because the topic today is a topic that it's kind of created some interest, some controversy, some concern, all the above, and that is vaccinations for pregnant women or maybe even women that are considering getting pregnant. Um, tell our listeners, let's just back up a little bit. Tell our listeners about your background, your OBGYN. You wear a clinical hat, but you also wear administrative hats. So I want to I want to I want to find out what's going on in the life of Dr. Heshmati. Yeah, yeah, no, thanks for having me, and thanks for covering this really important topic. I think this is something that's critical. Um, it's something that we're actively working on and ma- trying to make sure get the message out about vaccines for women and specifically pregnant women. Um, I am an OBGYN. I'm a clinically practicing OBGYN. I'm the past chair of the American College of OBGYNs for Washington State, um, and my practice is here at the Everett Clinic, where I also serve as the senior regional medical director for our central region. So I oversee see about 25 medical specialty uh, surgical primary care departments. Um, And I'm also our medical uh, director of advocacy. And so I interface um, with our government and our regulators um, and working together, how do we collaborate? How do we ensure the community is safe for things just like this? You know, ensuring we get the message out about what we've got to do to stay safe and stay healthy. So thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, the topic is, again, one that is hot right now in our society. I've heard many people, including people that I know personally, that are young and they are I mean, maybe thinking about getting pregnant or are pregnant right now. And so let's, uh, let's shed some light on this vaccination and pregnancy from you, an OBGYN and a practicing OBGYN. Tell us what your society and your thoughts are on the vaccination. Yeah. And so, you know, I've heard a lot of things and there's been a a lot of myths and rumors we've had to dispel. And so I want to start off by making it really, really black and white here. The CDC, the American College of OBGYNs and the Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, basically the high-risk OBGYN specialists, have all come out together and recommended that anyone who's pregnant, who's thinking about pregnancy, or who's lactating get the COVID vaccine, that that's the safest thing they could do. And I think this is critical because right now, only about a third of all pregnant women have received the COVID vaccine. Um, And when you take a look and say, why do we care so much about this? Um, We've got to look at the risk profile out there. If a pregnant woman gets COVID, she's three times more likely to end up in the ICU, the intensive care unit, and need the highest level of care. She's two to three times more likely to be intubated, to have a breathing tube put down. And so when we take a look at that, it's critical, you know, as a as an OBGYN, you know, I sit down with my patients and I, I want to go through what makes sense. You know, they want what's best for them, for their baby. I want the exact same thing. The best thing for everybody right now is getting the COVID vaccine because the alternatives are kind of scary. Let's just, let's just throw it out there. Let's just have a dialogue here. In your opinion, what are patients telling you? What are they concerned about? What are they, what are they reading? Yeah. What are they hearing? Uh, what's out there? And, you know, I think a lot of this is just because there was a lot of uncertainty early on. If you think about it, when the COVID vaccine was first studied, pregnant women weren't included in those trials. And so initially, a lot of the concern was, well, how do I know this is safe in pregnancy? Well, I can tell you now, as of the end of September, over 160,000 pregnant women have received this vaccination because some women in the trials inadvertently became pregnant. A lot of pregnant women chose later to get the vaccine. You know, many of my healthcare work colleagues got the vaccine. And in those 160,000 plus pregnant women who have gotten the COVID vaccine, we haven't seen any unexpected adverse maternal or fetal complications that have come from this. So, you know, and if you take a look at what the data says here is not only is it protective, you know, it seems to basically have the same protection as if you aren't pregnant. The side effect profile is similar, sore arm, you know, the minor things that you would expect. Um, But there's also the antibody levels that we're going to see there. So pregnant women have a good response to this vaccine. And now we're starting to get data similar to what we see with some of our other vaccines that antibodies are found in the breast milk. They're found in cord blood that we see in the baby. 
So it's likely that we're also having some protection to the baby on top of this. And I, so I think a lot of the concern was just that early part that the data wasn't there. And I want to reassure everybody that the data's the data's there now. The conversation will continue with Dr. Heshmati and Shannon O'Kelly right after this time out here on Como. It's a Northwest Lifestyle Weekend on Como News. Here's Tom Hutler and Shannon O'Kelly with more IRG Health Talk. Good morning, I'm Ron Shakal. Our program continues with Dr. Heshmati, Senior Regional Medical Director and Doctor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the Everett Clinic, talking about vaccine safety during pregnancy. Here's Shannon and Dr. Heshmati. Dr. Heshmati, thank you so much again for joining us Health Talk, and thank you for being so candid. What are the myths? Yeah, I mean, I think some of the things out there is, you know, there's concern about the vaccines. How does this affect my fertility? How could this change my DNA, or does this impact the long-term health of my baby? And I think the things that we just have to really look at is these aren't live vaccines. There's no adjuvants in them. They don't enter or alter DNA. They don't impact fertility in any way, shape, or form. And so when you take a look at it, it's, you know, the vaccine's safe. We've got data on now. What the vaccine does do is it protects a mom and it protects her baby. Um, we're starting to get more and more data that we're getting concerned that if a, a pregnant woman gets COVID, that she's got a higher risk of preterm labor, that she's got a higher risk of stillbirth. And so when we take a look at this, we know for a fact if you get COVID, your risks are much, much higher. And we've got a growing body of evidence that says we've got a vaccine that's safe and effective that can protect you from it. And so I think that's the thing we've got to stress is we wouldn't be recommending this if we didn't think this was the best thing for a mom and her baby. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I've heard and and often you see on social media and I think, some, well, I'm just going to say this. Sometimes that platform can have a lot of misinformation on it. And, um, you know, I've seen where, oh, I got the vaccine and my menstrual cycle changed significantly or, you know, some of those things. And I don't know. What do you think of that? You know, we haven't had any data that actually says that things like the menstrual cycle have changed. You know, what I'd like to highlight is, you know, a lot of things can impact somebody's menstrual cycle. Um, How much stress they're under, you know, weight gain, weight loss, you name it. There's a lot of complex interactions to go through. I think the thing that everybody needs to take a look at here is we've had 160,000 pregnant women get this. And so we know in that setting, it's been very, very safe. Everything else is out there. It doesn't mean we just stop here. We're going to continue to look at it. So the fact that there are concerns that have been raised and said, hey, could there be an impact on someone's menstrual cycle? There are people actually studying that right now. And so that's the commitment the healthcare system gives is we want to do what's best for everybody. And right now, the best thing is to get the vaccine. And any concerns that are out there are going to be studied. You know, one of the things I don't know that everyone's aware of is, you know, all vaccines, there's the there's the VAERS. Uh, area, the the vaccine uh, adverse event reporting system. So meaning anybody who has an adverse event from a vaccine or thinks they can't can report that. And that's going to be tagged in the government and people are going to look at it. In fact, vaccine manufacturers are required to report into that system anything that may have been an adverse effect. And so right now we're not seeing evidence of that. You know, we're going to look at it and anything else that comes up, we're going to look at to make sure this is the safest thing. Well, here we, we were talking to Dr. Hashmati, who is a clinical OBGYN, uh, very well spoken and very well put, Dr. Hashmati. As we wrap up, I kind of just close it out. I, I mean, it, the, the risk and the rewards of the vaccine. I mean, can you just close this out here? Yeah, you know, what I would highlight is we we don't really have a decision here about whether to get the vaccine or whether to not get COVID. Um, COVID is out. It's all over the place. You know, we still see rates that are really, really high. So our choice is, do we protect ourselves? Do we protect our pregnant moms and our babies against COVID? Or do we risk getting COVID? And we know the adverse risks are there if you get COVID. 160,000 women who are pregnant have gotten the vaccine safely, effectively, and every major medical society recommends that pregnant women get the vaccine. And so I'd stress that this is the best thing for a mom and her baby. Dr. Hashmati, thank you for your time. Thank you for shedding light on a very important topic. Have a great day. You know, some really valuable information from Dr. Hashmati. For more information, or if you have other questions, go to the theeverettclinic.com, theeverettclinic.com.